For many children, when you ask them the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Many will say they want to be an astronaut. The imagination of young kids runs wild, so it comes as no surprise a good portion of them look to the skies, absorb all the starlight, and see space battles on their televisions, only to return to school the next day and declare their purpose on Earth is to travel into the cosmos. If only it were that easy. In reality, there is not another career out there like the astronaut, that has a higher ratio of children who say they are going to become one, only to grow up and become something totally different. The answer is plain to see. Not only is becoming an astronaut reliant on incredibly high intelligence, decades-long dedication to schooling, research, studies, and absolute perfection in engineering, it also requires absolutely rigorous sacrifices most people aren't suited or willing to make. The rewarding yet physically detrimental toll it takes on the human body is one, if not the most critical, of those sacrifices. Between a total rewiring of a person's sensory systems to the decades-long loss of bone health after only mere months spent in space, it's no wonder only a few are both mentally and physically prepared to venture into the depths of the final frontier. To grasp a better understanding of what an astronaut truly experiences beyond Earth, let's take a closer look at the truly horrifying yet breathtaking effects space travel has on the human species' five senses. One of the first things they'll tell you on your journey to become an astronaut is to prepare for a complete overhaul of four of your five senses. That's not to say space travel will give you superhuman hearing or x-ray vision, but it will make noticeable changes whilst you spend time away from Earth's atmosphere. One of those transformations is the bizarre effects space travel has on your sense of smell, or rather, the lack thereof a smell. When traveling in zero gravity, either in the International Space Station or in a rocket abroad, the fluids in our bodies move upwards towards our heads and faces. Thus the sinuses technically never go dry and the sense of smell is increasingly dulled. Due to the dulled ability to smell, the changes in the senses create a phenomenon at the International Space Station in which all of the members aboard are constantly smelling a scent that can be best described as gunpowder. Some astronauts describe it a bit differently, like a combination of seared steaks, aged rum, and fresh raspberries in addition to that iconic smoky fume given off right as someone shoots a firearm. It should be stated that the smell of burnt steak and a smoking gun aren't actually present in the space station itself. These smells are impossible, purely because space doesn't contain the compounds or molecules necessary to trigger the sense in human beings. To understand the phenomenon, one must dig deeper into the details provided by the astronauts. Many of them clarify that the gunpowder smell only occurs when they enter the spaceship after being on the outside. With the inclusion of this data point, the smoke smell makes sense. Whilst outside of the space station, any and all substances lingering on the astronaut's spacesuit would burn up because of the intense radiation found in space. Specifically, any aldehyde organic compounds or aromatic chemicals would be burned off upon ship re-entry and provide the only type of opportunity an astronaut would be able to smell, if their sinuses would allow them. There's also the possibility these unique yet distinct smells are examples of astronauts dealing with unpleasant phantosmia, also known as cacosmia or phantom odor. Phantosmia is the sensory hallucination in which a person smells an odour that is not truly there, usually a scent resembling smoke, burning, and spoiled or rotten food. 
The cause behind phantosmia is both heavily researched and yet not agreed upon. Some argue it's due to infections of the nose, others claim it's due to dental issues. There are theories that it's a side effect of migraines, strokes, seizures, and other brain injuries. For astronauts, it's most likely a change in mental disorders, the exposure to extreme environmental elements, and the inhalation of special chemicals. So while the experience of losing your sense of smell, or smelling things that don't exist, isn't necessarily scary, it certainly is surreal, and could lead to a very troubling quality of life in general, if it bothers the astronaut enough. Directly tied to the sense of smell is the sense of taste. You've probably noticed, either by personal experience or personal research, that when your ability to smell falters, so does your ability to taste. It's not by coincidence either. Both your nose and your tongue are connected via the same airway, as well as utilizing nerves that run up and through the face and to the brain where the concept of flavour is created combining both scent and taste at the same time. This is the section of the brain referred to as the smell and taste centre. If there is anything wrong with the nerves associated with the centre, or the nerves in the nose or on the tongue, both smell and taste senses are diminished, if not disturbed entirely. Thus it should come as no surprise that when the sense of smell is dulled in space, so is the sense of taste. It's not to the degree that foods taste horrible or inedible, but rather the degree of intensity is lessened. That being said, taste wouldn't really be a sense utilised by astronauts, even if their senses were functioning normally. Space food is incredibly bland and despite packages displaying various types of foods and meal combinations, nearly all of them either taste the same or are completely devoid of flavour entirely. Not only that, but not all kinds of foods are allowed into space, so it's not like astronauts have a lot of options to expand their palate anyways. Food is also supplied for those aboard the International Space Station in bulk increments, so certain things are only available at certain times. It makes food a simple and uninteresting topic out in space, much to the contrary of the attitudes towards food on Earth. One of the most commonly discussed topics regarding space and the human endeavour to explore the cosmos is the fact that sound does not exist in most places in the universe. We've talked about it at length, how most sounds you hear recorded from beyond Earth are actually just various forms of light waves or other wavelengths converted into auditory wavelengths. The reasoning is quite simple. Sound doesn't exist in space, because space is a vacuum. No matter how deep you venture into the cosmos, there simply isn't a medium that can transmit audio waves. More specifically, these mediums on Earth would constitute water or air. Because space is mostly the literal definition of nothing, without even air to fill its gaps, Atoms and molecules can't vibrate and deliver the auditory waves we're accustomed to on Earth. So while there wouldn't be an issue with loud noises that disturb mental well-being or communication, hearing is still a surreal experience in space. Due to the lack of outside noise or sound, the only things astronauts will hear in space is the mechanical whirring of the spacecraft's interior, as well as the voices of the fellow astronauts and mission control. Because the astronauts are constantly hearing these similar, daily patterns, the sounds themselves become familiar. When the sounds familiarise, they no longer stimulate the ear or brain the way normal mechanical noises or specific voices would. This is not to say hearing gets worse in space. Rather, think about how you would think about background noises on Earth. 
If you work in a hot climate, where you'll run the central air conditioning on a regular basis, your brain has probably learned to tune out the hum of a HVAC unit. In a more relatable scenario, if you work in an environment near a construction site, where loud drills and heavy equipment are constantly turning on and off, after a while you will become familiar with those intense sounds. Instead, the sounds will shift to your auditory background, just like the few noises heard by astronauts when travelling through the cosmos. The issue of sight in space has been an increasingly prevalent point of emphasis by NASA and other space agencies around the world since human space travel has been fully realised. One might find it confusing how our ability to see or use our eyes in general whilst travelling the universe might be negatively impacted. Rest assured, when microgravity and high levels of radiation are at play, anything is possible with the human body. In terms of our sense of sight, the nature of weightlessness in space is the first thing to affect our eyes. It all has to deal with the liquids in our bodies and how the equilibrium they reach is not the same equilibrium sometimes attained on Earth. Rather, the liquid in equilibrium whilst space travelling creates a slight pressure in the human head, causing the face to swell and that swelling to push up and around the eye sockets. When the eye sockets swell, the astronaut's vision then becomes temporarily impaired. This is not to say space travel causes total blindness or the inability to see colour, but it does challenge both near and far-sighted abilities. There's an effect on sight similar to the effect space travel has on hearing as well. Like the constant noises of the spaceship and the voices of fellow crew members become familiar beyond distraction, the constant visual of the black and infinite universe as a landscape also becomes familiar beyond distraction. This is just a fancier way of saying, the more of the same that exists on the landscape, the less stimulation the human eyes will experience. For example, someone who has spent a year in space is less likely to fixate on a visual or image that someone existing normally on Earth will fixate on like a small flashing light. The most disruptive aspect of space travel's impact on sight is the complete antithesis to the lack of visual stimulations. No matter how familiar an astronaut is with their unchanging landscape, one thing that will capture their attention is the occasional cosmic ray, high-energy subatomic particles that travel through space at the speed of light, born from our sun and other stars across the universe. While the cosmic rays don't cause any sort of permanent damage, astronauts have reported seeing flashes sparked by the phenomenon. There isn't anything we can do about cosmic rays, which are inevitable yet regular features of the cosmos. That being said, researchers have been working for years on a viable strategy to help fight the swelling astronauts deal with in space and obtain the sharp vision they so desperately need to perform to the best of their abilities. Simply put, touch is the lone human sense unchanged by space travel and time spent away from Earth, at least on a stimulating level. Touch is controlled by nerve endings in your fingers and the skin in general, rather than relying on the liquids in your body and the equilibrium throwing everything off that way. Without any cosmic source altering the function of nerve endings in the human body, touch theoretically works the same on Pluto as it does on Earth. That being said, touch is an underrated aspect to basic human functioning and survival especially from a mental health perspective. Due to the absence of gravity and the protective garments often worn by astronauts aboard a spacecraft, as well as the busy nature of operating one in general, human touch is virtually non-existent, let alone skin-to-skin -skin contact. Thus, in a way, space travel does impact touch in that it makes it incredibly difficult for humans to embrace one another and re-engage with healthy mental well-being practices. 
Not everyone needs touch to survive, but for those that do, the anguish of sacrifice is sure to make one question the sanity levels needed to ascend from Earth and test the waters of space travel.